Hello everybody, my name is Nicholas Powers with Aero Electronics, and today we're going to talk about some of the aspects of security within Bluetooth Low Energy. Now, security is a very large topic that would require hours to cover, but in this video we're going to give a simple overview of the security management processes in Bluetooth Low Energy. Now, Bluetooth Low Energy was designed with an AES 128-bit encryption scheme for security. And AES-128 is one of the most robust encryption schemes, but it's very important to understand how keys are exchanged to really evaluate the true level of security. If key exchange is weak, then an attacker can get a hold of the keys, making security through encryption useless. Now, BLE has five main keys. There's a temporary key, a short-term key, a long-term key, an identity resolving key, and a connection signature key. Now, the temporary key is used during the pairing process. The pairing mechanism is the process where the parties involved exchange their keys and their identity information to set up trust and get the encryption keys ready for future data exchange. In Bluetooth Low Energy 4.2, there was a major change on the generation of this key that we'll explain later. Now, the short-term key is used as the key for encrypting a connection for the very first time devices pair. The short-term key is generated by using three pieces of information the temporary key, and two random numbers, one generated by the slave and one generated by the master. Once the connection is encrypted with a short-term key, the other keys are distributed. The long-term key replaces the short-term key to encrypt the connection. The identity resolving key is used for privacy and allows Bluetooth Low Energy, using what looks like a random address setup to an eavesdropper to hide who's talking to who. And then there's the connection signature key and that's used for authentication. In an encryption process, it's kind of like a chain, and encryption is only as strong as the weakest link. The temporary key is a major difference between Bluetooth Low Energy 4.1 and 4.2. In versions 4.0 and 4.1, there are three options specified for generating the temporary key. The first option is it just works. It's a mode designed to make the connection to Bluetooth Low Energy devices possible when very limited user interfaces prevent a user from entering or checking a past key value to be a device without a display. The temporary key in this situation is zero. It's obvious that this situation is vulnerable to many attacks. The passkey entry method is another mode that you used when there is a user interface on both devices that can allow for at least a simple display and entry of a numeric value. This value can take any integer between 0 and 999,999. This number is not big enough to be immune to brute force attack, but it's still better than no key whatsoever. Now, out of band mode is when the temporary key is shared thanks to another technology. Near field communication technology is the most common one and is considered fairly secure. So you're tapping two devices together to share that key and initiate a Bluetooth connection. Now, Bluetooth 4.2 has improved security dramatically. The numeric comparison method is added to the other three methods, and ECDH, or elliptical curve Diffie-Hellman algorithm, is used for key exchange in the process. The principle is based on an elliptic curve in the form of y squared equals x cubed plus ax plus b. In this video, we aren't going to go into the details of the addition and multiplication for elliptic curves, but be aware that they are very secure and it's close to impossible to reverse. Now imagine G is a public key and D and E are the private keys. Alice can send P, being data, equal to D multiplied by G, and then P and G are known to an attacker, but there's no known mathematical tool to find D. The same thing can happen for Bob and his private key. Alice and Bob can then calculate a new key, R, equal to D multiplied by E multiplied by G. They then have a common key to encrypt their messages, and an eavesdropper cannot calculate it. So they can hear each other, but nobody else could understand that data. In the link layer video, we presented the link layer packet. The MIC, or message integrity check, is used to authenticate the sender of the data packets and is inserted between the data and the CRC. It has a four byte length. To calculate the MIC, the connection signature key is used along with a sign counter. The sign counter is a 32-bit value that must be incremented for each message from the source device to the destination device for the duration of the bond. The sign counter is set to zero immediately after bonding and is incremented for each new packet sent, even if the devices are disconnected in the meantime, and then this procedure prevents replay attacks, so somebody can't just reuse the same data in order to hack into a device. Once the keys are exchanged, the devices are paired. If the keys are stored, we say the devices are bonded. 
Now the security topic is endless, but most developers just need to understand the main keys we presented to develop their applications, so we're going to stop here. If you want to go more in depth, we'll provide resources for that.